Welcome to my garage. This week we are finalizing our bed lift. We had this in our previous van. It was such a cool feature and it made taking the bikes in and out really, really easy. Oh. What do you think so far? First 20 seconds. I think it's great. You're trying to be funny. Good for you. But if we're being honest, I still don't get the whole bed lift thing. Really? Like, I still don't understand why you need one. So the whole purpose of the bed lift is because of the bikes. Like this is because of the bikes we're lifting to be able to access the storage. But can't you just put the bikes outside? Like so many people just put their bikes like on the roof or they put it on the very back. Like there are those racks. Just lift it up. Oh, these cannot go outside. No, no, no. Not only are the bikes heavy <laughs> and expensive, that lifting them up, no way. We have to like roll them in. So we're also not going to store them on the back because we need to protect them from the weather. That's a vulnerability. Makes sense. And also when you're like driving through a dodgy place and you have to stop at like the local store, you don't want those on display being advertised like, hey, here's thousands of dollars just like on the back of my van ready for you to steal. But still, it's just so big. And like in a van, you probably don't know this, but in a van, like every bit of space really, really matters. It's kind of like one of those things that once you have it, you can't go back. You know what I mean? Oh girl, I know what you mean. <laughs> You're gross. So just like take the wheel off. Why don't they take the wheel off? Just take the front wheel off. Taking the wheel off of one of those, to be honest, it's like not even an option. It's not like taking it off like a pedal bike. Sorry, before we move on, what was that thing he was doing with the mask and the <laughs> So he's, he's welding aluminum. He needed to learn how to weld aluminum, which we didn't expect to be honest. I didn't think he would do it. You couldn't just buy a finished frame. Has to make it all the time. We're moving on. So this is pretty much the same thing you did last time? No, it's not the same as last time. It is not the same as, it has to be lighter and I need it faster. It has to be like three times faster. I mean, we can keep watching. I'm sure you cover a lot of this. I know you're sensitive to feedback. You get it. So just play it, I don't care. You're like really impatient, no offense. We're trying to save as much weight as possible on the furniture inside. So that means Lottie needs to custom shape an aluminum bed frame. Then we'll need to install slats for both comfort and mold prevention. It's a massive bed. This bed lift is different than like an elevator bed or a Murphy bed. And later on in this video, we're gonna discuss all of the design reasons we decided to do our bed lift this way. And quickly before we get into the bed lift, I wanna show you what's been happening on the land. Wow, entry level aluminum welding is easier than I thought. I picked it up pretty quickly, just watched a few videos and practiced on two samples. Broke the joints later and seemed to be pretty good. So I'm happy. Now I'm just ready to redo the roof rack with the solars to keep it lighter. <laughs> <laughs> So we sleep this way, it is a little bit narrower bed. This is just the shape of the tail lamps inside of our van. And this middle divider is gonna be supporting the slats. Kitten, what are you doing here? We're in the middle of a build montage. I'm just making sure it fits because the van goes narrower towards the top. I'm aiming for light weight. I'm aiming for thin mattress, not to steal away from the space above the bed. So we have four separate actuators, 300 millimeters tall. And then we have these custom brackets Pavel made yesterday that are ready to be screwed in our wall panels and find the right position for the bed so we can be lifting up and down without scratching any of the fabric or any of the panels. And here, this is the overnight mining, four printers running at the same time. And these are brackets for the, for the slats. 
to hold it in, a, in that aluminum frame. And we're gonna be riveting them in. This is very elegant solution of mounting, I think, these actuators. Um, it's lightweight, it's nothing material, and we're just transferring the uh, force to the panel itself, which is distributed amongst many riveted nuts. I think it will be good. Our previous bed lift took roughly 40 seconds from start to finish, which isn't slow, but for us, the faster the better. On the last van, we only had one remote, which we had permanently placed by the side door. More on this later. Go. The actuators we're gonna use on this van build lift the bed the same height as the previous one while operating three times faster, theoretically. It was fun though because we did this timing test to see how long it took to press the button, unload the bike, get dressed, and go. And in the previous van, it only took 60 seconds, which is sort of wild. We'll play this game again once we're completely moved into this one in camping. Attachment number two. That's neat, right? <laughs> it is very neat. I like. Very like. Like, like, like. Final. Final mount, and we are lifting up and down forever. This will be a big victory if it works. That's a massive bed. Not supported yet. It's definitely gonna be wongly winky. Wiggly woggly. Nice. And it might be scratching my fabric, so that's what I need to keep an eye on. Yep. To no my zamčilo v tepu, v té horní poloze, dívej, tady není teďka žádný vangl. Na tím by se dalo i spad. F*** yes. To je mega. Yes. It's so much faster that, than that last time. That looks awesome. It yeah. feels good. It feels confident. This is awesome. So now I'm thinking we'll probably model a simple 3D printed brackets and just screw them in. Mm -hmm. That way we, we won't need any any guidance, any any rails or anything sliding up. This project has been a big uh, skill gainer for me. Having now aluminum welding in my sleeve is always very precious a skill set. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very happy. Now I just need to figure out how to attach these these slides properly. So that's kind of asking for some 3D printed housing and and I cut them on length. And here, this is the overnight mining. Four printers running at the same time, and these are brackets for the for the slides to hold it in, a, in that aluminum frame. And we're going to be riveting them in. I'm getting a thin, pretty average mattress, but I want to make this springing system as good as possible so we compensate for average mattress and have actually pretty comfortable sleeping. This is all for uh, weight saving. Mm -hmm. so we went pretty wild with the solar panels and a, and a rack, holding them and tilting them. <laughs> An interior, I'm scraping every kilo I can. <laughs> this is the size of the mattress. As you can see, only the corners really need to be trimmed, but this is going to be pretty standard size. So anyone who's ever concerned about sleeping inside of a van, check out our bed. Mm, mm, mm. That was a bit of a riveting. That's so good. Is it lightweight? 
Wow. Wow. That's really like. That's I think awesome. That's to do. I'm kind of ready to cut the mattress and immediately test it out with activators. Let's do it. It's all completed. Let's cut. A lot of people forget that just because you're sharing a small space doesn't mean you're doing the exact same things as the other person all the time. And this is a really big deal for convertible beds, Murphy beds, burrito beds, elevator beds, pull out beds, because you're kind of having to change your bedroom into an everyday space. I mean, within couples, it's only natural. One person's gonna wanna sleep in or go to bed early, someone's not feeling so well. With these types of setups, then the other person can potentially keep that from happening very naturally. For example, when we were in the USA, I got such an awful night's sleep one day. But Lottie had a lot of work to do. Because of our van setup, I ended up having to sleep on the floor because I understood that the amount of work and the vitality of what needed to be done on the computer outranked my nap. It sucked. Regardless of how little bed work it takes to set everything up or as fast as it can be done, if your bed is prohibiting the other person from doing exactly what they want to do, it's irritating. And unfortunately, these design annoyances can actually lead to real world fights and irritation like what the heck lottie you know i was tired why'd you make me sleep on the floor see what i mean it becomes a lose-lose scenario fix beds for the win vote for pedro i hope you've enjoyed this intro into my pajama life much more content like this to come <laughs>Um, so these are a huge priority for us to travel with. And I know a lot of people now who are traveling on the road are prioritizing secondary transport, like one wheels or the uno wheels or anything. We love them, but they are also our biggest, not troublemaker, but our biggest demand because they are massive cargo. So this cutout here, this is where the wheel is supposed to come through if it all fits on this side for the passenger and under the sink. That's how we were able to kind of maximize the space so that the bikes can fit without impeding on our main living district.
This has been a months in planning and, and uh, this is the final test. If it even closes with these two bikes, I think this one will be on the edge. That one should work. But whew, after so much months and so much work, I hope we can actually fit them in. And, and, and. Oh my god! <laughs> a bit of a help. Wow. At least that's not going anywhere. That's locked. How about this? That is sick. That goes against the LED. Okay. That is holding on the LED. That would do some damage. That needs to be fixed, and then we're good. You can see how narrow how this gap makes it narrow towards the top, and that's exactly the reason why we kind of are okay with lifting only 30 centimeters because the lift is mainly to comfortably get the bikes in and out and because we're maximizing the space above it the bed goes really tight clamping those bikes without the bed lift it's such a hustle and it's so difficult to get them out but the fact you can lift it up stand the bike up ride it out is all we need when we build a van, we always build in kind of a phases, like big bulk first, and then we fill in the gaps. So this is exactly the example. When we have the bed lift now, that lifts up and opens up a beautiful opportunity for a nice shelving system for the kitchen. Because I am thinking we have the option to attach something here hanging from the frame. And then when you open it from inside, you have this extra storage for pots, for pans, for any cooking, cleaning, accessories, you name it. It's awesome. I love utilizing all these little gaps later on throughout the building. 